the topic selected is very dear to my heart teachers are the pillars of the education system globally with or without covid but this 18 nanometer evil genius padochin has brought out the fractures of our traditional pedagogy like an x-ray nobody can any longer pretend that the colors of the educational spectrum need substantial changes to cope up with the new challenges the china or uh, there is no other alternative factor has forced us to embrace the electronic world as an immediate solution but electrons have no emotion only motion if learning is visualized as a domain of cognitive aspect then we should not complain our students learn more intensely as some of the it patrons wants to believe but fortunately or unfortunately education is something more than the intellectual mental exercise and emotion is one of them now i have shown you here what aristotle said long time back see from my own experience what i could see is that relationship between the teachers and students are mostly affected by what we call as a controlling our emotions especially anger so as aristotle has said anyone can become angry we do that frequently that is easy but to be angry with the to be angry with the right person to the right degree at the right time for the right purpose and in the right way that is not easy i think that is the challenge that we teachers face in the field of education to clarify that statement uh, we have to deal with a little bit of theories of education which normally we don't like you know talking about theories in education since our topic is on inspiration i want to tell you about the intangibles in the education we are all concerned with the tangibles we are aware of that but what are those intangibles the quality of education offered by an institution like mgm is not reflected only by the tangible things like uh, computers or uh, mining marble or the brick or the garden of the campus it is more radiated in intangibles like the professional dedication of the management and the teachers and of course the bonding of the students with the institution and the external support from the parents they are the intangible institution building factors love affection honesty dedication passion emotional maturity empathy and the list goes on the teachers are the face of the institution for the public and to the students like kamala hassan in the shavadaram the teachers have multiple roles to play and remember that teachers are daily interacting with explosive material apart from the corona the adolescent minds of the children in this slide i have highlighted components three components of learning which is uh, except one maybe the other two are uh, intangible so in this connection let me recall one of my inner teachers some two years back like you all the teachers were very erudite knowledgeable most of them with phd's and what not they were not very open in the interactive section they were not participating freely very serious faces faced me i was also not resonating with their mind then i asked them can any one of you sing a song a song philosophical or song extolling action or one with a lot of pathos or sad feeling long silence and i thought i had failed to inspire them to talk freely but then an angel in the form of a lady assistant professor stood up and spontaneously spontaneously 
started singing a song. Can you guess what it is? It was a philosophical kind of song. Devam Manishane Srishtichu. Uh, all of you must be knowing that. A Vailak Devarajan evergreen philosophical song. The end of the song was celebrated with a loud applause. The ice was broken. The strained muscles of the face relaxed and a joyful smile replaced it. Thereafter, all of them, leaving all their inhibition, participated in the discussions wholeheartedly and exuberantly. Who inspired them to change their mood from an abject resignation to cooperative participation? Certainly, I only initiated, but the magic was done by the teacher who did the singing. So I hope you will appreciate the intangible things in education. Here it is uh, 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 represented as a kind of trinity. You will be seeing a lot of three numbers now. The first one is the cognitive, which is what we teachers normally focus on. We are always talking about uh, uh, academic scores and uh, syllabus and all that. So you talk about syllabus, curriculum and all that. That is that part, mostly tangible, though there is an intangible component to that. But the second part, affect, is full of emotions and attitudes, which was what I was touching initially, and the inspiration side is in that. And the third one, the psychomotor, is the ability to do things. This is one part of uh, the engineering or technical education with our labs and all kind of uh, projects and all that. So the psychomotor side is there. There are also two, the objectives of education. So is the objective of uh, our uh, technical education is only to snatch good jobs. All of you will agree and nobody will say that not getting a job is an But let me represent it more cogently with the, another metaphor of uh, three gear wheels. The smallest gear is what we call as a command of substantive knowledge. You should have a knowledge base. The second part of education is ability to seek and find knowledge when it is required. And most important, the biggest gear is use it to solve problems. The application is... Now, look at what uh, Albert Einstein said. Education is not the learning of facts or rote memory, but the training of the minds to think. This is what a good uh, institution should keep in mind while planning their mode of interaction with the students. Now, how to acquire knowledge? Because that is another challenge facing us, especially in this uh, COVID era. Rang Piyashe is a child psychologist and father of epistemology. Epistemology is the science of knowledge. To discover things by himself or itself. When we try to teach a child something, we have taken away the opportunity for him to discover things by him. Nowadays, uh, as parents, you know, we don't do that. We immediately give the answer and then if that is not coinciding with what the child visualizes, then we find, we think that there is a learning problem. So the main concept of acquiring knowledge is construct our own self-knowledge. It's a PR shape. And uh, the next one, what I want to do, so there are quite a few teachers who take this kind of uh, protective uh, sort of mentality towards the students. But are you a leader? In fact, I want uh, at least one or two of you to respond to this. I don't know. I don't know whether it is possible. But at least if you are gathered in a place, maybe if, whether you like it or not to be branded as a leader, you are a leader. Showing a lot of instruments. The students are something like this. They are, they are tuned to different frequencies and they are expected to play different roles in an orchestra. If the different players, the mridangam or uh, the tabla or the people are following different tunes, then you will be finding there, is, there will not be any harmony. So who decides about the harmony? That is the conductor. And in this case, 
it is the teacher. So the teacher has got the responsibility to somehow make the different uh, um, instrument to vibe for the same tool. So that is the challenge that we face in the classroom or now outside classrooms. If you're in a business, you know, the first thing that the management expert will tell you is that you should know your customer. And here, who is your customer, major customer? Naturally, it is the student. And do you really know an adolescent student? Especially the brain, which initiates all the kind of behavioral behaviors and attitudes, which you face day in, day out. Most of us would like to treat uh, the adolescent students or adults, even though we know that they are adults. See, there is a structural problem in their brain. As I have shown in this, uh, uh, a child is born uh, uh, with hardly around uh, um, 30 to 40 percent of the brain capacity in the sense that the neural connections are not made. As the child grows, the, the connectivity comes based on the and this progress comes from the rear side to the front side. Your student or a girl is uh, around uh, 14, 15. The kind of maturity starts from the rear side to the front side and the front side decides the logical decisions and then the logical responses and all that. So if you are meeting a student early around 16, 17, he is a semi-finished product. The hardware in him is not fully processed. So if he is not logical, it is not his problem, but the architectural problem. The nature has decided in such a way that he will attain maturity only towards around 18, 19, 20. In fact, girls are supposed to attain this kind of maturity at the age of around 18 to 19, and boys another two or three years later. So if you know that, why he reacts spontaneously and without any rational thing, we have to have a kind of empathy with him. We were also like that when we were children. But most of us treat a child as an adult in a miniature form, bonsai type of thing. So our attitudes and our behavior to the student in the class is almost on an equal basis and if he is not rational, we will also react. I was uh, invited to a class in a Tamil Nadu college uh, last year uh, just to witness uh, how their teachers are taking the class. I did not want to hurt her, but two or three things there are, of course, positive things. There is her knowledge, the cognitive side. but. She started taking her attendance, calling one, two, three, four, like that. The students were given numbers, you know, so they were giving one, two, three. I asked her whether she knows them by name. She said she knows only the toppers, some three or four, or the bottom, another two or three people who always create trouble. Otherwise, she is unaware of the individuality of the students sitting in her around 60 of them 16 in the class so she was treating them as numbers so do you think such a teacher will be able to inspire them inspire the students now let me go to the hallmark of a really happens you know in theory we talk a, talk about a lot of things so as a teacher in the classroom are we going from theory to practice or practice to theory. That is, you know, we go to the class and uh, you are heard enough. So this, I just put it in between just to show that the concentration of an adolescent student is hardly around 10 minutes and an adult maybe 15 minutes. So you have already covered that. So now I will have to find some ways to bring you back to the attention, your class of about one hour, let us say, you have got to somehow divide it into some kind of segments and see that the monotony of learning or teaching is broken.
So how we can do that all the entire one hour? Now in this uh, uh, COVID time, if you are doing an online presentation, naturally, if you are a very efficient teacher, you will cover the full syllabus in one hour with a lot of slides or whatever is videos and all that. So you will be having a mental satisfaction that everything is fine. But now in our case also, you see, I'm not able to interact with you. I don't know how many of you are sitting over there. So whether whatever I said has, has been uh, received by you in the way that I would like you to receive, this is a mystery for me. Now, I, I, the teacher and the student is something which we have got to reduce. We cannot eliminate it, but we have got to reduce. Now for that also, just like the student, now we also will have to think of some in, in educational theory, we call it metacognition. It is applicable to teachers as well as students. We will have to ask ourselves, what are our strengths, the weakness, opportunities and threat. Now, if we ask ourselves, like uh, some of these uh, photos which I have shown, are we aggressive? What is our own assessment? Or we are a nice guy, we are great people. Is there any special personality uh, features in us? Are we a split personality? No, split personality means one personality in the classroom, second in the teacher's room, third in the principal's room, and fourth in the, are you charismatic? You know, some of, some of us are very good and very nice in dealing with people. Frigid, soft, very soft. So anything what the students do, you will condone them. Undependable, you have no, you have no goal. Charming, yes, that is a good thing. Cunning, that is we always, you know, think, you know, if, if, even if the, so there are all different personalities, you know, not that we can reach their level and all that, but there must be a kind of, some kind of model. Now, what is the hallmark of a inspiring teacher? No, earlier I covered a good teacher. See, we are good if you are able to complete the syllabus and then we go ask for the norms and most of the expectations of the students and the, what difference is an inspiring teacher? See, if you want to become an inspiring teacher, some additional ingredients are required. Already we have touched one by, as an example. In um, Kerala itself, in one college, I met a physics uh, professor. A retired professor, but taking a physics class uh, for the first years. So I asked him, uh, sir, um, uh, how are you teaching uh, physics? Because physics, you know, the concepts are uh, relatively a little uh, difficult and many of the, our students complain about that. So he said, sir, after my long, long experience, I don't teach physics in the class. What I do is, I help the students to learn physics. It stuck me. Because uh, I've seen Feynman's uh, lecture classes and all that in YouTube, how he teaches uh, physics. He's called metacognitive strategies. There is no time available. Otherwise, I would have indulged in that also. Those so we have got some time. Soon I'll be, uh, I'm launching a, um, a YouTube uh, channel where some of these things are put. What are the strategies in this COVID situation that you are going to adopt when you cannot have a physical feedback from the students? So there are quite a few st strategies uh, and I know too, I'll be showing to, the, showing to you. Now, one of the major thing which I indicated in the beginning itself for an inspirational teacher is uh, be a good listener. Look at uh, Ganapati. What is uh, um, his identity? See, he has got very big ears, but his mouth is so small. So he talks less and listen more. I think this should be a metaphor for those teachers who would like to inspire people. You should try to listen to the heart of the students. What they really want to convey to you, not in words, but maybe as a feeling. If you are able to listen to that, I'm not talking about uh, the listening in a very literal means by which questions can be asked and interpreted. Now, don't interrupt. See, if somebody is, if your student is now 
trying to give an answer, you are in a hurry to finish the syllabus, you know. So you will always say, immediately your hand will go to the brightest student in the class. So that you will receive what you really want. So you have missed an opportunity to find out what did not click in your pedagogy. So patience. Now immediately, even, even though you are not uh, uh, interacting with me, I could hear your answer. Sir, if you do all this, how we can uh, finish our syllabus? Maybe I, uh, I can uh, uh, give uh, some idea about that out of my experience. The next one is uh, listen to the feelings and not just words. I covered that and show empathy. See, the class will be having about maybe some three sections. It was five to 10 percent, maybe the cream gifted students. Even if you are not there, they will learn. But another section, you know, your help will be required. And the third section by them. See, if you invite some girl, feed the hungry, not feed the sumptuous. So in your classroom, who require your help is those who are not able to catch up with the pace at which you are handling different concepts and topics. So have empathy towards them. Otherwise, if you are an efficient teacher, you will finish your syllabus in your 45 minutes and then go home and pat yourself on the back. But it is not effective. Now, as a teacher, are you able to develop a sense of humor? Some of the teachers are. But I have seen that many teachers believe that you are not a good teacher if you are not serious in your face. How many of us enter the class with a smile? There are several instances in my career, and as a principal also, I could see that, you know, you go to the class with attention. Maybe we have not prepared very well for handling that class. So there are three, three stages in making a delivery in the good teaching learning process. One is the preparatory stage. A teacher, before going into the class, the teacher has got to have a very good preparation and uh, time management on how she is going to deliver, based on some objectives, the material which she plan in her mind. Then the next stage is formative evaluation. Formative means in the class itself, you should find some time to assess whether the students have received what you want them to receive. That is the student-centered approach. So the formative one will be after passing through one or two objectives, you pause. Like that, no, I have made a pause, but I could not interact with you. And ensure that you are carrying all of them together with you. Otherwise, you will be carrying only that 5% or 10% who are fast learners. So this, this is a formative evaluation. The last is, of course, the summative evaluation. This can be done at the end of the unit or end of the semester, which you are doing it. But the quality of that evaluation will decide how your students will respond to your learning inputs. So this is a very important thing then. The sense of humor means if you are trying to pass something, a message to the students, not uh, without, without any human uh, affection attached to that, it will not uh, reach their heart. So a, a class, in a class, you have got to see that maybe either you crack some jokes or you allow some, the students also will be able to participate in that. If you go to the end of this presentation, I will show how this can be done. Empathy I have already covered. That is, we should look the student's point of view from their shoes rather than from our eyes. So that is empathy. And if you are empathetic, then the inspiration will follow. Next one you see, we have to be honest and sincere. I mean, we have to be honest. I have shown Mother Teresa here, who said, the biggest disease today is not leprosy or tuberculosis. 
but rather the feelings of being unwanted. See, how many of your students really feel that they are wanted? If you only ask questions to the best, sitting at the front uh, uh, bench, others feel they are unwanted. And they will look at uh, other things and uh, they will try to engage in themselves in something else. And already maybe at home, their parents, they, both of them may be working. They may not find time to have a, to share their emotional world. They are wanted. And if you give some appreciation, see, we can always say inspiration, sometimes, you know, appreciating at the wrong way. No, it should not be. Appreciation should be done only when it is deserved. But if you have got the insight, you will be able to appreciate even small things. If a student scoring 10% mark in the last has now scored 15%, you can asking. So the appreciation can take different forms. And appreciation is a very major uh, tool that you have got as a teacher to inspire your students to come along with you and achieve the goal which you have set together. Now, smile and be kind. I think I told you earlier this, smiling. We ask our students to smile. I think, I hope healing is extremely important. You know, it eases the stress. It opens the gate, our, the, the gate of our mind to accept things in, without inhibition, joyfully. So as a teacher, the morning if you go, you know, the kindergarten down there, that we teach them, say good morning. And some engineering colleges do that now, but others, you know, absolutely no reaction when the teacher comes. But maybe you're, you're in, the students are given uh, freedom to write whatever they want. And the principal um, should be uh, very careful when the feedback is given to the teacher. Because most of the feedbacks or many of the feedbacks may not be very palatable to them. So one teacher, I, I, I had uh, the difficult task of uh, giving the feedback to them because most of the remarks given by the teacher uh, students um, were touching upon uh, the behavioral problems of the teacher. So uh, I called her to my room and then started sharing some of the feelings. First, highlighting her good things and then the second, this part. Just her face also was, uh, trouble is there. So I stopped it and said that you don't worry, but you are basically a very good teacher because you are a very knowledgeable person and you will be able to set right things like that. You know, what she did is after getting out of my room, she flashed into her room where another teacher was taking it, taking the class and then she just outbursted at the students. She said, see, I teach you with so much of sincerity and this is what you have written about me as a feedback. Henceforth, don't expect anything from me in our anger. You remember the Aristotle's uh, uh, quotation, the first. I put it deliberately thinking about this incident. So angrily she said that and then she returned. And she went back to the teacher's room and started crying. Now look at this situation. We feel that only the children or the students are subject to emotions. I have seen many times teachers outburst with emotions. In our college, we had a counselor. I'm sure you also may be having. So initially we said only the students will go to the, for counseling. But we found a demand coming from the teachers asking for uh, help from the counselor. They had their uh, problems with their husband, with their uh, mother-in-laws and father-in-laws and what not. And from that, they are coming to the class. How they can behave well if they are already ignited with these kind of emotions? A smile will replace all. I told you about the Shavadharam in the beginning. A teacher will have to act. Now the acting may not be sincere, I agree. But you have to act in a way that some of, some of these things which you may not like also, you may be emotionally downtrodden and um, coming that, you know, 
some sometimes we principals have got a habit of calling the teachers in the morning itself and uh, firing them you know some of the principal i am not telling you all not your principal of course so we fire them to our satisfaction and then we leave them and uh, do you know how they uh, how they behave in the class they will show all their vendetta hatred towards the principal in the class by showing it to the students so what i want to say is emotion is an extremely important factor for becoming a inspirational teacher so smile i hope next time when you go to the, not only to the classroom you know otherwise also keep a standard smile on your face either as an acting or as an internal input discuss but don't argue this is another thing that uh, you know some of us would like to prove that we are very knowledgeable people by arguing with others and uh, proving our point see nowadays we like to be very careful about the students sitting in our class especially engineering and technology and uh, i think you are from most of the students are uh, coming already loaded with knowledge maybe they know better than you how to operate a computer or how to handle a software and all that so you should have a some delta t a q some extra quantity of some knowledge or something related to that so that they will honor you or they will respect you what you are if you are a typical textbook teacher i used to call them i think uh, ott teachers that is one textbook teacher if we are following a textbook uh, academic that is we say that you just read one or two textbooks and from there only questions will come and we also read that our knowledge is limited to that knowledge as i mentioned earlier is uh, is called uh, epistemology the science of knowledge we can roughly divide the knowledge into three one is uh, known knowns known knowns means it is available in the textbooks as teachers most of us go through this known knowns if a teacher can be replaced with a textbook the student would always like to do that why should they listen nowadays with computers or recording facility they will listen to you at at their leisure maybe in the night or in the early morning or something in the classroom things are a little different so if you are a textbook teacher i have seen some classrooms where the teacher spent their time by dictating definitions definitions my god they wish they could easily get from them what we have to handle is the second part of the knowledge the first is known knowns and the second part is known unknowns so we have to have a feel that what are the things that the students may not be knowing so we have to concentrate on that in fact a teacher has to be there her presence is justified only if she handles this known unknowns the third one is still challenging it's a creative part of it inspiration is a very important factor in that unknown unknowns that is we do not know what is awaiting in the future but still can we have the imagination and insight to think about that so if the teacher has got the insight and if the teacher is able to share that kind of unknown unknowns with them see for instance time travel just let, let us take ejewell talked about time travel almost some uh, 100 years back in his book nobody thought that it will materialize now people are almost uh, nearing a kind of technology or inventing technology with the aid of quantum mechanics that whether they can really do the time travel so unknown unknowns are there existing what is known known today was unknown unknown maybe 10 years back now you are doing email i remember in 1990s when i was in industry we always used to send fax and suddenly fax reappeared i mean disappeared nobody could predict that something like email will come so unknown unknowns are there but if you are able to share that kind of insight with the students the students will eagerly look at you they will wait for you to come into the class 
rather than cursing, oh, I have got to attend today, so Mr. or somebody else's class, my God, how to sit in that class. So this is the kind of difference. So as I told you, a good introspection, looking inwardly, metacognition, will help you to discover this kind of facility, life of the students at home. See, they spend almost 50-50% at home and in the class. If that is something different, you would be finding that you will not be able to uh, resonate with them. You will not be able to enter their feelings or support them in, in their time of this emotional outbreak. So, we have to be a little concerned about their life at home. Then you may ask me, where is the time? Naturally, where is the time? How I can spend my time uh, with the students to know? I will just uh, talk about uh, the other side of it. I know many teachers from the schools. I've interacted with them. And these teachers almost take uh, uh, six to seven hours per day class. But in professional colleges, like yours or uh, other, and I don't know what is your practice in your college, but normally two to three hours is the time period which is given. And now a lot of administrative jobs are there, I, I, I know. And 80% uh, or 90% of the faculty are uh, ladies. So they have got their rather uh, perplexing problems at home. So considering all this still then, somehow we would like to spend some time with the students to know each individual. We have a strategy to know people. We used to have group discussion, group meetings of uh, say 10% of the top uh, students and uh, the around the 15% of the bottom students, especially the bottom 15%, those who have lost more than two subjects or scoring less than 30% and all that. We used to assemble these students together in one meeting along with the teachers, principal at the, as a kind of presiding. And we will invite the parents also. And each of the student is, uh, is uh, allowed to, give his own uh, feelings outside in, presence, in the presence of their parents. And many things came out of this. Why they are not performing? Why they are not able to perform? We could see that a little fine tuning in the relationship at home. See, most of the, most of the places, the father is, um, I'm not blaming the father, but father does not take um, individual interest in his children, especially about the education side. It is the responsibility of the mother. And in all these kind of meetings, only the mothers attend, the fathers are very conspicuously absent. So these kind of meetings have helped us to get a handle to some of the problems which they face at home in their land. And once our counselor or somebody, you know, I, I also used to personally uh, talk to them and uh, at least a few cases, uh, very pathetic cases, we could bring them out of that. So, you know, some, uh, at least three or four cases, we offered them hostel facility, almost free. And suddenly their academic performance improved. No, what I want to tell you is, uh, you don't think that I'm a teacher and I'm confined to what is happening in the eight hours in the class. An inspirational teacher, will wind backwards, wind in time, and wind also the kind of environment where they are there. An inspirational teacher will always realize that for a student, there is a outside the classroom world. You know, they may be going to the uh, football ground or other places, or they may be singing. They may be good in so many other things, but if we, Teacher, I have seen teachers insulting uh, students just because uh, their, their academic performance is very bad. Can we inspire them by insulting? No. They may be very good in certain other things. One of the difficult boys in our college was academically very poor. We made him the captain of a particular house. And then every day you used to come about uh, discussing about sports and all that, you know, how they can improve. And without him knowing about that, you know, his academics also was improving. So there is a, there is a, a space 
outside the classroom. All the students need not become professors who can handle uh, 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 relativity. There is life outside, a good actor, a good teacher, another good teacher. So there are different walks of life in which their talents could be used. An inspiring teacher will be able to discover that and guide them, help them, and make a difference in their life. So that is the definition of an inspiring teacher, making a difference in their life. Another thing is that, you know, so emotions, see, any material thing which we give, we, we can take back. But once a word comes out of our mouth, we cannot take it back. We should be very careful about what we say, especially to the adolescent uh, students to others so choose uh, what you say not say what you choose you know some people justify this say, oh, they will say oh i am a very open hearted man i i will just tell whatever i feel it's not a good quality especially for a teacher the teacher as i told you like kamla hasan maybe you have got to be a little bit of acting you have got to filter things through before you say something whether it hurts the emotion or the feelings of the other person. This is a very important factor. And another thing what I want to stress is that when somebody is making a mistake, we jump at it and take it as a kind of opportunity to belittle him and prove our superiority. It is not the proper form of learning. In fact, only through mistakes we learn. Making a mistake is an opportunity. That is how you learned when you were a child, you know. When you fell down, when you were six months old or something, nobody uh, scolded you. You fell down and then you learned by yourself how to get up. All by yourself. Maybe your mother must have given you a small helping hand. So autonomous learning is very important. Autonomous learning means now that auto autonomous learning is taking place. That is why many people are telling that this is the COVID has helped us to discover the hidden power within us to learn things autonomically. That is with the self-reliance. As a child, we learned almost all the things in a very short uh, period. Autonomous learning. So mistakes are there only to show that what how many of us find fault with the uh, students when they don't give the correct answer in science there is no absolute truth whatever we are teaching the students are only relative truths science has never used the absolute truth so if we believe that whatever we are teaching is the final truth, we are wrong as teacher. So we are committing our mistakes. Whether Newton's law can be applied or not, or a theory of relativity should be applied, is a very big question. I will truth. Maybe certain things, Newton's laws are good. In certain things, Einstein's general relativity is good or special relativity, some other places. So what is pointed out to this is, the teachers should have a lot of breadth in learning and depth in learning. What is the breadth in learning? For an inspiring teacher, he or she should have a kind of interdisciplinary knowledge. See, if you, if you are teaching only computer science, don't say that I don't know anything about electronics or mechanical or I don't know how the car works. In uh, one of the interviews for selecting a uh, teacher in one of the colleges in in, in Kuchin, not your college. I, I asked uh, that what is the horsepower of your uh, car? He was having a Maruti car. Uh, he looked flabbergasted, surprised, and he could not uh, tell me. He said, "I have I have not opened the bonnet and then see what is inside." Mechanical engineer. I asked, "What is his uh, fridge?" What is the type of motor he is using in the fridge? He had no answer. Is it uh, some, something? And what is the speed? What is the voltage? No, no numbers. 
So just because you know God was kind enough to give us a B Tech or an M Tech or a PhD, it does not mean that we have done justification to our profession. So a good inspiring teacher should have a good breadth of knowledge that is interdisciplinary and a depth of knowledge. It is called T learning, T learning, like a T square. Uh, many of you are not seen a T square. In our days, engineering is symbolized by the T, T square, like a stethoscope for the teachers. So we should know something about everything and everything about something as a teacher. If your student get up and ask you some question about uh, why I know I am not able to interact, why the upbeat, which is more I am not telling now, but why the difference? So the thing is, the why questions are much more important than what you call as a what and how questions. An inspiring teacher will concentrate more on the why type of questions. So it is not very easy to come up with that kind of answer. You know, why the uploading and downloading? There is a difference. Maybe I've got a set of other questions. I'm just giving you a kind of sample. So the mistakes can occur not only to the students, but to the teacher. But we are very fortunate because we set the questions. If the students are asked to set questions for us, I don't know how much, how many of us will pass that exam. So take mistakes as a kind of opportunity. Are you a student or teacher? I hope and pray that most of you will say that I am also a student and not only a teacher. So there is a concept of lifelong learning. What is that? See, the moment we come out of the womb, the moment we come out of the womb of our mother, we start learning. Many things, we start to learn how to cry, then only we'll get the milk. Involuntarily, unknowingly. So from there onwards, the journey of learning starts and it is lifelong. So a learning society is where the grandparents, children and grandchildren learn together. I tell you, many of these, uh, many of the so-called difficult concepts which now, which I used to teach or I used to know, I learned uh, after the age of uh, 55. Because that was uh, the circumstances. Because when I switched over to academics. So age is not a factor. At the age of 65 only, I could really find out what is the real difference between special relativity and, rela and general relativity. And the quantum mechanics. Now, Two months back, I learned something different. Now I, have, now I know how to make a YouTube uh, uh, uploading for a presentation, iMovie. So the point that I want to tell you, share with you is that don't say that, you know, I am too old to learn. If you are going to the classroom as an actor, as a teacher, then when you come out of that, you should go back and take the role of a student. You should hunt, you should be thirsty for knowledge, seek knowledge, curious for knowledge. So if there is a need for knowing or seeking the knowledge, that knowledge which is acquired by you will be in your position because you have constructed it as we are said. You will not forget that. The knowledge you construct by yourself, you will not forget. And the same experience you can share with the students and tell them how to learn like the physics professor, like the physics professor. So questions are not confined uh, only to teaching engineering or technology or mathematics, STEM. The innovations can come in methods of making the concepts go deep, acceptable by a very tender mind of the student with their limited knowledge. See, you are a very knowledgeable person. So for you, this all looks very silly. But once uh, in my room, a teacher came uh, and I was asking her, 
I think it was a centrifugal force. She was explaining something, telling that there is a centrifugal force. Then I asked her, what is this centrifugal force? Please go and then uh, tell me, uh, and uh, take, you, take two or three days and then tell me whether as a teacher, whether you can use this word confidently. Okay, what you cook in the uh, kitchen, if you want to make a good uh, sambar, the flavors are important. You know, the small levels of certain things we are adding will be important so far as the taste is concerned. So our inspiring teacher, we have to think about the small ingredients in our pedagogical methods. I already told you about the science. It starts from the kitchen. Just to look at some of these problems that uh, he is asking. We, are not, we don't have time to discuss why the gas turns its color from blue to red if something you have put on the uh, stove, water or something, and then it is boiling. You will find that at a certain time, the color of the flame turns from blue to red. If you have not observed it, kindly observe it next time when you visit your kitchen. Why frying is faster than pressure cooking? You know, this, you will say it is a mechanical engineering question. But I told you earlier, the STEM in the new education policy also, it is stressing STEM learning, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. The teachers should not put artificial boundaries around them, like what your college has put around you, dividing into departments. That they have done it for administrative purpose. Does not mean that your brain cannot move out of the departments. So please don't tell that this is the mechanical engineering problem or a physics problem. If we have got the right kind of thinking process, anybody having done a 10th standard education will be able to answer this. Third one, why steam cooking of vegetables is healthier and faster than ordinary cooking? What I want to point out is we are only talking about the mundane things, normal things what we see around. We are not telling the students something which is available in New York or in other cities and uh, in the skies. No, we are down to earth teachers. Talk about something which they have seen in their daily life. Why you cry while cutting onions? See, we do cry, isn't it? Tears will come out of, not because of empathy towards the onions getting cut, but there is a reason. Now, when the coronavirus came also, we are using a dutifully soap. We say that soap should be used for three minutes or 20 seconds, different people, different timings. But have you ever wondered why, how, why this soap is doing a job uh, which uh, maybe costly chemicals cannot do. They are using detergents for that. So some bit of chemistry you should know. See about the coronavirus, uh, I hope you can see this. This is the latest scientific American issue on coronavirus. You can see the envelope, the material, real chemistry, science part of that. We get the aha feeling of the, oh, now you know what it is. Rather than simply mechanically going through the washing process. The learning has happened there. You will be knowing organic chemistry is some part of it. Don't say that you are an electrical engineer, so I don't want to know about chemistry. Knowledge does not have territories. So why you cannot defry a cook, a, a egg? So similarly, some questions, you know, what is happening daily if you go on asking, you will be finding that many of the scientific concepts, so-called the difficult one, will be easily available with you. Then you are inspiring the students. Exactly. They are not self-confident. To, to, to talk in a uh, platform where uh, 60, 70 people are sitting and looking, gazing at you, is itself is an experience. So every day, especially for first years, you earmark some five minutes. So two students or three students, let them come randomly. Uh, or if you want to help them, you can tell that tomorrow you are going to do that. So let him come prepared. So sometime you spend all the projects, something which you find nice and funny and interesting and uh, stimulating. So let him do that. Next, uh, that blue color shows the teacher can handle her curriculum, whatever that she wants. Then there is a kind of demonstration in the sense that see, any profession, people carry 
their own tools. A doctor will not go, or a dentist, or a doctor, or a surgeon, they will not go to their place without any tools. So we teachers also should be armed with some of the tools, which as I told you, the kind of things, you know, we can, we can carry quite a few, few things demonstrating them. Not all the days, but some of the days at least. Or ask the students to demonstrate some of these kind of things. So earmark something, because whatever visually they are seeing, it is called experiential learning. They will never forget. Whatever theory, rote memory, they mug up, they may forget. This they will never forget. Again, the teacher can go back to the mode of uh, finishing or completing. Finishing is a very wrong word, actually. So it's a, uh, completing their curriculum. Then go for a sort of, uh, it is called a formative evaluation. That day, how much, what all things they have learned. That you can do orally or otherwise, that is uh, your prerogative. Your imagination only limits the kind of methods. You are free to do whatever that you want. Now computers are available. In fact, at home they can do this. And then send it. I think now schools are doing that. You know, you deliver something and at the end you ask the students, you give a set of questions and ask the students to send back to you, um, back to you their answers to some specific things. Immediately, no, immediately means another uh, maybe 12 hours or uh, don't give it too much of time. Because human, thing, human beings have got the tendency to procrastinate. Don't do things which you can do today. What, should, what we should have done yesterday, we will try to do tomorrow. This is a human tendency. So ask them to immediately learn. Just summarizing and other students will help.